Let's make a vibraphone and a marimba preset. You can download this preset for free in the demo version of my preset pack called Sounds You Know. The demo version has 10 of the presets from the full version, which has 175 presets. A link for that's in the description. To get started, initialize preset and then go to the wavetable editor. Now if your mouse has a scroll bar, you can use that to zoom in. And I'm going to make this a little bit easier on myself visually by just turning up the first harmonic here. Because what we want to do is change the amplitude of the first seven harmonics. And then we're going to cut out the rest. So this is all approximate, but the second harmonic I'd say that's about 20%. The third harmonic, I'd say this one's about a third of the way up. The fourth harmonic is about three quarters of the way up. Then the uh, fifth harmonic, I'm gonna keep that as is at about 25%. The sixth harmonic, zero. And then the seventh harmonic, I'd say this one's about 15%. And then I'm gonna right click on that last harmonic and I'm gonna click clear right to just clear out all the partials above that seventh harmonic. So what I'm left with is this. Now this is going to sound a lot more like a vibraphone or a marimba when we add in that glassy or metallic-like quality at the beginning of the note and once we shape it to be more of a pluck. So first I'm going to add in that glassy quality. I'm going to use oscillators 2 and 3 to do that. So let's start with oscillator 2. For this one I'm going to use the init and then I'm going to go to the wavetable editor. And we're just going to pluck out the 10th harmonic. So you got to count from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm going to raise that up and then right click, clear right, right click again and clear left. Now if I play this, it should sound like a major third uh, pretty high above my fundamental. And it does. Now for the last oscillator here, this one's a little bit easier. For this one, I'm gonna use the harmonic series wavetable, and then I'm just gonna move it to the very top, which is the 16th harmonic. And I believe this is um, four octaves above zero here. Now, the reason I didn't use the harmonic series for this one uh, is because uh, you can see that we're not snapping from keyframe to keyframe, it's blending between the two. And in uh, Vital 1.5.5, uh, I think this uh, is broken right here. I can't go to none. But hopefully in future versions, you can go to none and then move discreetly between the wavetables. I have a version of that saved here called Discrete Harmonic Series. And for this one, it's snapping between the keyframes. So hopefully that gets fixed soon. I let Matt Titel know already, and he says a fix is on its way. But for now, you don't need the discrete harmonic series. You can just move this all the way up to the top since the top one is only one partial. So anyways, now that we have that, let's start shaping the sound with our envelopes. So for envelope one, I'm gonna set the hold to 0 0.05 just to give it a little bit more punch. And then for the decay, this one's gonna be 3.5. Turn the sustain all the way down and then let's set the release to 0 0.6. Then I'm gonna change the shape just a little bit by pulling this middle point a little, maybe a little less. And now we get this. Now it's starting to sound more like chimes and that's because uh, we need to shape oscillators two and three to be much shorter. So for that, I'm gonna use oscillator, excuse me, envelope two. And so for envelope two, we can set the decay here to 0 0.3. Same thing with the release, 0 0.3. Turn the sustain all the way down. Let's give it a little bit more of a pluck by pulling that middle point. And then let's apply this to oscillators two and three. So in order to do that, I'm gonna turn the level all the way down and then have envelope two modulate the levels. Now I want oscillator two to be louder than oscillator three. Um, so I'm gonna hover over where it says oscillator three level, right click on that. I'm gonna set this to 0 0.64. 
So now it's starting to sound a little bit more like a marimba or a uh, vibraphone. So one more step in the timbre of this sound is going to be adding in filters. So I'm gonna add in filter one, turn down the resonance all the way. We're gonna be using the analog 12 decibel filter, 100% key tracking, and then I'm gonna set the cutoff to negative four. Now I'm gonna control the cutoff of filter one with envelope one. So I'm gonna drag that over, and I'm gonna reduce that modulation amount to 24. Then I'm gonna shape the overall sound with filter two. I'm gonna set this to a uh, digital filter here, 12 decibel. And then I'm going to lower the resonance all the way. And then I'm going to set the cutoff to 48. And then for this one, make sure you're not routing in oscillator two, you're routing in uh, the outcome of filter one here. And that's gonna help just tame some of those highs especially when you start playing in the high register of these instruments, uh, this will help it sound a little bit more realistic. So now that we've done that, let's add in some velocity controls to make this instrument playable. So I'm gonna hold shift and drag velocity over to the decay of envelope one, and then I'm gonna lower that modulation amount to 0.22. Now the reason for this is so that sh uh, lower velocities are shorter notes. Now another thing I want velocity to control is the glassiness of the sound. Um, so I'm going to control, with velocity, I'm going to control how much envelope 2 controls the level of oscillators 2 and 3. So I'm going to drag over velocity to both of these modulation amounts here. And now higher velocities will be more glassy. Now one more thing I want to control with velocity is the cutoff of filter 1. So I'm going to drag that over, and then this one is going to be 48 semitones. And I forgot to make this one bipolar, so in order to do that you can right click and make bipolar that way. So now we're getting really close here. Now we can add in macros to control the sound further, and we can add in a vibrato, excuse me, a reverb here. Uh, so for the reverb, you can do whatever you want. If you want it in a bigger space, smaller space, whatever, we're going to be just focusing on the main sound for this. So uh, I said vibrato, but something that would be nice would be a tremolo, especially for a vibraphone sound. Uh, a lot of times they have the pedal that can give it sort of a uh, tremolo effect. So in order to do that, I'm going to use LFO 1. I'm going to set the frequency to seconds, and then I'm going to set the time to 0.2 seconds. And then for this, I'm just going to control the amplitude of oscillator 1, since that's really doing most of the sustaining in our sound. So I'm going to make this bipolar by holding shift and drag this over to the level of oscillator 1. And then I'm going to drag over macro 1, and I'm going to control that modulation amount. Now since this is bipolar and since I don't want this sound to go too hard into the filters and get distortion, uh, I'm going to set this Y grid here to 2 and then lower this point here down to the middle because this middle point corresponds to whatever uh, level I've set for my oscillator here. So now it will start at a uh, minimum volume and go to the volume I have set here, and then go back down. And once I add in some tremolo here. Now I don't want it to start at minimum volume. I still want more of that body of the sound at the beginning of the note. Um, so what I'm gonna do is set this to 0 0.5. So this is the phase of the uh, LFO, so I'm always gonna start at this middle point here. Now I can label this tremolo, tremolo, there we go. And um, you can do this to taste. I like quite a bit. I'm gonna keep it about maybe 0.6, somewhere around there. 
You can also change the frequency if you want a faster or slower tremolo. So now for macro two, I'm going to use this to control the glassiness of the sound. Now you'll, you may recall that uh, the velocity is controlling the glassiness of the sound. Um, so I can't have both controlling the same parameters, the level of these two oscillators. Uh, but what I can do is I can use macro two to control how much velocity is controlling those levels. So I can drag this over to those amounts right there. So these purple amounts here are the levels of these two oscillators. So now I can call this glass. And let's hear with no value here, with maximum value. So I can control it that way. Basically, this is controlling how much velocity will make the sound glassy. So I'm going to set the value for this one to 0 0.26, make it a little bit more mellow, make it a little bit maybe more like a marimba. If you really wanted to get a marimba sound, you'd probably take the tremolo off. Uh, but anyways, let's move on. Now I'm going to use macro three to control a really unique feature of vital, and that's creative ways of adding in unison voices. Most of the time you add in a unison voice, it's just a slightly detuned copy of the original voice, but we can do a lot more with vital. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to lower phase randomization to zero for both oscillators two and three. I'm going to lower detune to zero. And now when I add in voices, they're going to be exact copies of the original voice. And the only difference you're going to hear is that voice becomes louder. So now in order to change those voices, uh, we're going to go to the advanced tab. So now in the advanced tab here, we have these stack modes. And if I click on this, I have a lot of different ways of adding in unison voices. So unison is the default, but if I go to octave, for example, now some of the extra voices will be one octave higher than the original one. So I'm going to do that for both of these. And I can control the volume of these added voices with unison blend here. So I'm going to turn those down and then use macro three to control how much of these extra octaves we're adding. You especially notice a difference from zero uh, to a positive value over here. So that's going to add just a little bit more glass to our sound. I'm going to label this highs. Now we're not just limited to these options here. We also have some really cool features where we can add in uh, voices with different table positions from our uh, wave table. And then we can also use different values for the uh, spectral warping and the distortion spread here. So if I had values uh, chosen for the spectral warping feature or the distortion here, I could get different values by using this. Now, I'm not using any of that, but I am using a wavetable uh, for oscillator three, my harmonic series here. So what I could do is I could go to the advanced tab and then I could lower the table spread here. And what's gonna happen is those extra voices will be uh, different wavetable positions, so there'll be different partials of the harmonic series. So let's hear what a difference that makes. It's not going to make a difference going above here because we're already at the limit um, of our wavetable. Now with my last macro, macro four, I'm just going to use this to control the remaining velocity controls. So I'm going to drag that over to how much velocity is affecting my filter. And then I'm going to drag it over to this modulation, which is how much velocity is affecting the decay time. And I'm going to call this bell range. So I'm most of the time going to keep it up here, but if I didn't want velocity to affect the length of my note or how bright it was, I could lower it down to zero. 
now velocity is only controlling the volume of oscillators two and three, which is how glassy the sound is. Now, if I wanted this to sound more like a uh, marimba, I could lower the, down the tremolo, since most of the time marimba doesn't have tremolo. Um, I could also maybe change the envelope to be a little bit shorter. I could lower the glass value here. Take the highs down to zero. If I wanted it to sound like a vibraphone and I wanted it to sound like it's being struck with maybe a hard mallet, like a metal mallet, I could add in these highs here. And that's going to be a very bright chime-like quality. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.